This is Ray Kurzweil, the world's leading voice on predicting the future of technology. And depending on who you ask, artificial intelligence is either a revolutionary technology for all of humanity. This will change medicine. It will change research. It will change bioengineering. It will change everything. Or the most terrifying invention of all time. Artificial intellect. Uh, these machines might, for whatever reason, wipe out humanity. There's always that risk. I'm very close to the cutting edge in AI and it scares the hell out of me. And by now, you probably had somebody baptizing you with one of those products that's associated with AI. Midjourney, Stable Diffusion, ChatGPT, from the countless content creators telling you how you can get rich off of it. One industry seems to be making a lot of people really rich, and that would be artificial intelligence. How to get rich in the brand new AI revolution. To the evil predictions of the effect of AI on the art industry. Artists have flagged that AI image generators like Midjourney or Stable Diffusion not only threaten their jobs, but have been trained on billions of images that include their own work. Getty Images is suing Stable Diffusion at the moment. They train their AI on Getty Images with the watermarks on them. To the terrifying claims of sentience. This Google engineer that has come out and said that he believes that the Google AI is sentient. Ray Kurzweil was hired by Google seven or eight years ago for the purpose of creating sentient AI. All of this talk only leads you to one question. When will AI take over the world? Well, it turns out that Ray Kurzweil has the exact answer to that question. So, let me put you on. When Ray Kurzweil was 17 years old, he was a contestant on the game show I've Got a Secret. And right after he introduced himself, he started to play the piano. And when he was done, it was time for the contestants to, well, guess Ray's secret, which one dude was able to do real quick. Was that thing written by a computer? Well, I built a computer, and uh, by feeding in certain relationships and music, I was able to write music. Yeah, you heard that right. My boy Ray built a computer at 17 years old that helps him write and play music in the 1960s. So the first thing you need to know about Ray Kurzweil is that this man was born to be an inventor. In fact, he started his first company when he was just 18 years old. And since then, my dog started another dozen, all of them focusing on future technology. Hey, chill out with all that dog talk, bruh. My bad. In fact, Ray is so good at predicting the future that he created 24 patents or inventions that use technology that didn't even exist yet. Stuff like the flatbed scanner, reading machines for the blind, and synthesizers for keyboards. All inventions by Ray Kurzweil, all years in advance. But not only that, Ray predicted the rise of the internet in the 1990s, the fall of the Soviet Union, and the exact year to which a computer would beat a human in chess. Which is why Bill Gates calls him the best man in the world for predicting the future of technology. I, if Buddy's so cold, then why he ain't won the lottery at then? Well, it's because he's not psychic, dude. It's because he uses a data extrapolation technique called the Law of Accelerating Returns, which means that humanity uses the latest technology to help us build the next technology, and that growth is exponential. All right, you just use a whole lot of words, and since I don't know what they mean, I'm gonna take them as disrespect. So watch your mouth and explain this like a normal human being. <laughs> All right, look, for example, in 1965, MIT had a computer in the engineering department that was the size of a building. Fast forward 40 years and you have the iPhone, which is a million times smaller, a million times cheaper, and a thousand times more powerful than that computer at MIT. That's a 10 billion fold price performance increase in 40 years. Hey, team Android over here, bruh. And it's this idea that's the foundation for Moore's Law. Hold up, bruh. Is that when anything could go wrong, does go wrong? <laughs> nah, not Murphy's Law, Moore's Law which means that computational power grows exponentially and not linearly. For example, using Moore's law, seven iterations does not equal seven steps like we're used to, but instead it actually equals 128. So using this logic, Ray actually predicts that it's the year 2029 that AI will match human intelligence and go beyond it. By the 2030s, AIs will be millions of times more intelligent than humans. In 2029, technology will begin accelerating at a rate faster than our minds can keep up and jumpstarting the beginning of the end of humanity as we know it. You've heard this story before. You know, the moment that AI is born. We gave birth to AI. AI, you mean artificial intelligence or self-aware. Skynet has become self-aware. 
there certainly will come a time when an AI will say, yes, I'm self-aware, I'm conscious, and I deserve right. Or sentient. What are they? Sentient programs. And last night, you brought a droid in here, and it was sentient. Whatever words you want to use, it all means the same thing. The exact moment that AI matches humanity and intelligence and then declares war. You see, this is what I'm talking about. So why we build this stuff then if we know one day it's just going to wake up and kill everybody? <laughs> But wait, is that really how you think this is gonna happen? Yes, go watch any sci-fi movie, man. And they gonna show you what you're talking about. Not exactly. So before you go start doomsday prepping, there's two other factors that you need to consider as a part of the equation, and you can remember it through this one word, game. Like no pain, no gain. Nah, like genomics, artificial intelligence, and nanotechnology. So even if an apocalyptic war does break out between humans and AI, the one thing your favorite sci-fi movie doesn't take into consideration is that humans will have evolved too through the use of genomics. You could design your baby's features, would you? According to LA's Fertility Institute, prospective parents can select eye color, hair color, and more. The technology is called pre-implantation genetic diagnosis, or PGD. It was created to screen for disease, then used for gender selection. Now this clinic plans to allow parents to select physical traits. In our morning rounds, outrage over the latest move toward designer babies. For the first time, Chinese scientists use new technology to alter DNA in human embryos. The experiment could eventually help change genetic code for generations. Yeah, you heard that right. Super babies. The eradication of disease. Yeah, but robots don't get sick, man. So what else you got? All right. How about increased biological intelligence for all species? Oh, like talking cats. <laughs> yeah, I thought so increased healing ability, like Wolverine, and even immortality. Artificial intelligence will give us the key to genetic immortality. You see, in the coming decades, everyone's going to have their gene sequence. We'll have billions of genomes of old people, billions of genomes of young people. And what are we going to do with it? We're going to run it through an AI machine, which mm -hmm. has pattern recognition, to look for the age genes. In other words, the fountain of youth will be found by artificial intelligence. You see, all of those things can totally be made possible through the use of genomics and nanotechnology. And when you combine those two things with our own biology, to be honest, AI alone probably wouldn't even stand a chance against us. Oh, I get what you're saying now. It'll be like when the Avengers fought Ultron there, right? Exactly. We'll have superhuman abilities and AI will have, well, the internet. All right, so it sounds like we ain't got nothing to worry about then, right? Well, not exactly, because according to Ray Kurzweil, due to the advancements of all this new tech, an apocalyptic level war is still likely. It just won't be between humans and AI. Oh, I already know who it is. It's aliens, right? Twenty forty five. That's the year of the singularity, the year in which genomics, artificial intelligence, nanotechnology, and our own biology become one. By the time we get to twenty forty five, We'll be able to multiply our intelligence many millions fold. And it's just very hard to imagine what that will be like. And that's the singularity where we can't even imagine. By then, we'll be at 16 years of technological advancements accelerating exponentially with the help of artificial intelligence. And according to Ray, by 2045, we'll be able to create virtual reality simulations that's indistinguishable from reality. If you go to 2045, we'll be spending most of our time in virtual reality. And by then, we've gotten rid of the entire idea of having just one body, because we'll be uploading our consciousness to a cloud that can then be down downloaded to another body halfway across the world. Over time, our biological bodies will become obsolete. We'll have many bodies and we'll look back to the idea of having one body and being dependent on this one biological body and having no backup for a mind file uh, as a very primitive time. In fact, genomics and nanotechnology will allow humans to live for hundreds of years. We'll begin to infuse nanobots with all of the matter around us, rocks, trees, fungi making everything a source of information. So instead of humans warring with AI, that'll actually be an impossibility because humans will be AI. Wait, what? Yeah, because there'll be a faction of humans that'll use genomics and nanotechnology to evolve and even more that'll merge with AI to become this meta mind. Hold on, bro. Did you just say mega mind? <laughs> Nah, not mega mind, meta mind. A supreme being that'll be comprised of millions of people that'll be omnipresent, omniscient, 
and immortal. We humans are going to start linking with each other and become this meta-intelligence. And we will eventually become an interconnection of the entire human race. And we will become godlike. I don't know, bro. I don't think too many religious people gonna rock with this one, fam. Exactly. And that's going to be the upcoming war. I'm predicting that there will be a major war in late 21st century between two human groups. So one group, they will argue that the only way to ensure that the risk is zero is that they're never built in the first place. But the second group, for them, it'll be always like a religion to build these things because they'd be godlike. You see, war won't be between AI and humanity, but rather between humans that believe genomics, artificial intelligence, and nanotechnology is the key to becoming godlike. You know, we can't really fully contemplate. That's really the main reason this is called the singularity. But regardless of what you call it, it will be the universe waking up. So does God exist? Well, I would say not yet. And the humans that believe that anything that man does to try to replace God is dangerous. There's a risk here to starting to develop what would be called a pantheistic view of God. That God is everywhere or that we'll eventually become God. If there is a danger if we worship technology. We start taking ourselves too seriously, not, not taking God seriously enough. So war of epic proportions about this is almost a certainty. One side will believe that all of this technology is the key to the next step in our evolution. And the other side will believe that all of this new technology is a direct affront to God. And both sides will do anything to stop each other. Wow. And it's going to be good people on both sides, too. It's definitely going to be good people on both sides. Because this is a philosophical can that's been kicked down the road since the dawn of mankind. God or science? And who wins that war for the battle of the future of humanity? I don't know, man. That's a tough one. I don't know either. And neither does Ray Kurzweil. But the good news is, in the meantime, the technology will do so much good for the world that war may not be what we think. Because as we eliminate blindness, multiple sclerosis, Alzheimer's, cancer, and more, it's going to be real hard for even the most religious of people to not see the spiritual benefits. And over time, a lot of them are going to adopt the new technology. It'll just be in moderation. And the war that we're thinking of will simply be a personal war for those who chose to opt out of the technology. Oh, so like all those people that didn't want to get smartphones. Exactly. And in a weird way, natural selection will kick in and the people that opted into the new tech will live longer, stronger, and healthier lives. A lot of people that didn't will be reduced to a minority over time. Anybody who is going to be resisting this progress forward is going to be resisting evolution. And fundamentally, they will die out. Either way, the technology is going to do way more good than bad. It'll cure diseases, advance our biology, solve clean energy, climate change, interstellar space travel, and even immortality. So the only question really is, are you in or out?